Hi, and let me be one of the first to welcome you to SAS by SellerAmp. Hopefully by now you've activated your subscription, which you can do in the email that you were sent just after you signed up. And hopefully you've also been able to load the Chrome extension, load the mobile app, and access the web app. If you haven't gotten access to all three tools or activated your account yet, I would recommend that you pause for just a minute, double check that first email that we sent, all the instructions are in it. Then come on back and we'll get started. You'll want to have access to your account in order to do the things that we're going to do in this video. So what are we doing in this video? This is the first in a two-part series to help you understand how to actually get in and use SAS. In this first video, we'll be focusing on how to get your settings set up. Our second video will actually cover the process of analyzing a product. So without further ado, let's go ahead and show you how to get those settings set up. For this video, we're actually going to use the web app uh, simply because it does give a full screen view. It's much easier to see on the screen that you're looking at. But anything that we're doing today in this video can be done on the mobile app or the Chrome extension as well. So let's go ahead and get logged in. And once you're into your account, you'll want to go to your settings area. Settings area is the cog, which again can be found in the mobile app or the Chrome extension, or in the case of the web app, it's simply under my account. For as many different Amazon sellers as there are in the world, there are that many different business objectives. Here at SellerAmp, we want to listen to what your business objectives are and let you know if a product that you're analyzing does meet those objectives. So it's critical that you go into your settings and tell SAS what exactly those settings are. Because keep in mind, what you may see as a good deal might not be a good deal for somebody else. So again, it's critical that you take the time to come into settings and tell SAS exactly what you're going to be looking for and what your objectives are. As you go through your settings, keep in mind that hints are available if you do need a reminder as to what that field represents. First, you want to select your home marketplace. Obviously, we have all the Amazon marketplaces represented here that SAS does analysis for. And there's always new countries being added. If you ever have a question about another country being added, please just drop us a line at support at selleramp.com. Merchant token, you won't need to do anything with it this time. For marketplaces that have VAT, this is where you'll want to enter the VAT scheme that applies to your business. Whether it's not applicable, not registered, a standard rate, or a flat rate, in this case, I am going to go ahead and say that I am not registered. Now we get into buying criteria. And these are really things, as I mentioned before, that you believe are your keys to success. SAS will never stop you from buying a product that you analyze. But SAS will give you indications of whether it meets the criteria that you put into your buying criteria. So first, let's take a look at BSR, both minimum and maximum BSR. Best Sellers Rank, also known as Amazon Sales Rank, tells you how a product sells in relation to other products in the category. The lower the rank, the better it sells. But not all categories are created equal. So SAS shows you the rank as a percentile within that category. For example, a product that has a BSR percentage of 1% is a good seller. It sells better than 99% of the products in the category. SAS wants to know what BSR you are looking for. Here in your settings, you can set this up so SAS will indicate if a product meets your BSR requirements. It's not required, and like I mentioned, it won't prevent you from seeing any products. But it's more to give you an idea of how a product sells. As you gain more experience sourcing, you'll more than likely become more familiar with BSR. I am going to leave our minimum and maximum BSR at the default values of 0% and 3%, meaning SAS will let me know if a product falls within this BSR percentage. The other key buying criteria that you want to focus on is your minimum profit and your minimum ROI or return on investment. So what exactly is profit and ROI? They're easy ways to understand if you're actually making money on a product. Profit represents the difference between the amount earned and the amount spent. So a minimum profit will represent the minimum amount 
of profit that you want to see on a product after all your costs and fees are factored in. Minimum ROI represents the minimum percentage of profit versus the cost of the product, again, including all your costs and fees. Like with BSR, SAS won't prevent you from sourcing a product that doesn't meet these requirements, but they will be highlighted for you in red or green to give you a quick indication. And in the case of our example, I'm going to go ahead and put a minimum profit in of two pounds and a minimum ROI in of 30%. And again, as you get more comfortable sourcing, as your objectives change, you'll more than likely come back in and adjust these figures. Other costs that SAS will need to know to do accurate calculations include your prep fee. If you are an FBA seller, and if you are using a prep center, for example, this is where you would put in your prep fees to include in your calculations. Miscellaneous fee. If you have, say, some wiggle room that you want to build into a product, this is exactly where you would apply it. As you get started sourcing, a lot of people like to build in a little extra cushion. This is exactly where you would do that. So I'm going to go ahead and put in one pound. You can also enter a miscellaneous fee as a percentage of your cost, if you prefer. And if you're an FBA seller, you're obviously going to have your inbound shipping rate from Amazon, so this is exactly where you would enter that in. Now, there are a few default values. These values will obviously be defaulted in your analysis, so you don't have to keep going back and, and changing it to the setting that you prefer. Um, ranks and Prices timeframe, the Ranks and Prices panel, actually shows you historic information about the product that you're analyzing. Um, I am biased to showing a 90-day average. In my opinion, that's really kind of gives you a good feel for a product's performance. Uh, but you can obviously select any of these. You can always see return um, to change your default. And of course, with every analysis, you can uh, actually edit the time frame on the analysis. FBM cost. If you are an FBM seller or doing any FBM at all, you'd want to put in your cost uh, into, into this field here. And storage time. Within the FBA calculations is storage time. Uh, if you want to choose a default storage time, absolutely, you can do that. Uh, otherwise, you can just leave it blank. Again, all of these uh, default values can be adjusted on the fly as you're in doing analysis. If you prefer, if you are an FBM seller versus FBA seller, you can choose your default. And as far as European fulfillment, um, EFN versus PAN-EU, if you have a Europe European fulfillment model, um, then go ahead and select that default here. And the last one is the custom ROI calculation. Again, don't not critical, but uh, within the custom ROI um, calculation panel, you can actually set a default value if you choose. Um, again, you can come back and reset this if you want. A couple other things that you'll definitely want to get set up or take a look at is um, the Keepa on the search results. On search result pages, SAS has the ability to show you the Keepa chart. And by selecting on, that will default that on in your search results. I do recommend that you go ahead and default that. And if you'd like to store your geolocation while you're using the mobile app, um, handy if you have people out doing RA or you want to re retrace your steps and remember where you were, you can go ahead and authorize SAS to um, store that geolocation information. So that are your, those are your basic settings that will help, again, SAS um, understand what your objectives are, uh, get your defaults set up and understand all of your costs. A few other things and settings that you want to take a look at will be things like tags. We'll educate you more about tags. We've got a whole video on a video series on notes and tags, um, but this is where you would set those tags up. And then panels. You'll see more when we get into the next video of how exactly you use the panels. Panels can be turned off and on. So if you do not have a need for uh, a piece of data that SAS shows you, you can actually Turn the panel off so you don't see it in your results. You can also move the panels around. So you're obviously going to get more familiar with the data points that you like to see. This is where you would come to actually move those um, panels around. So just keep that in mind for now. Probably won't need it yet, um, but just know that it is here. If you do decide to export to Google Sheets um, or you're an Arbitrage Hero subscriber, or your subscriber of Seller Toolkit, this is also where you can configure those accounts to connect into your SAS account. So once you get those set up, we'll go ahead and hit save. Please don't forget to hit save. I do it all the time. Please don't, please don't follow in my footsteps. And it looks like our profile has been updated. So now we'll head back to the home page. 
And now we're ready to dive into our analysis by searching on an ASIN or a EAN or a UPC or any text. That's where our next video will pick up everybody. So for now, I will just say goodbye and we'll see you in the next video.